Hi, this is Craig, and welcome to another episode of Cruising Off Duty. This is going to be a gear review episode, and I have a lot of gear to review in one episode. So stay tuned. It's going to be interesting. Hi, this is Craig, and welcome to another episode of Cruising Off Duty. So as you know, I did the BBI sailing series, and that took a lot of time. I had a lot of hours of episode when I came back from the BBI, so I wanted to do a bunch of episodes in a row all about that. During the time I was gone, and shortly after, I started getting a bunch of gear sent to me from companies I've dealt with before, like Freewell, and then some new companies who started sending me some gear to review. And that's great. I appreciate people sending me stuff to review, um, free of charge to me, which is awesome. But um, I didn't want to start intermixing my BVI trip with gear review and then back to BVI trip. So I didn't want to do that to confuse my viewers. So I'm st I stuck all this gear review after the BVI trip, which I'm done, of course. And I'm about to start into my St. Lawrence and the Thousand Islands and the Great Lakes uh, sailing this season. And I want to put the, that into one big component as well. So this is going to be my episode to cover all the gear that's been sent to me. These companies, because they've seen my channel and I guess they like the quality, have sent me gear just to review. Like, hey, we've got some stuff we'd like to send you if you like it or if you don't like it, whatever. Put it on your channel, review it. Um, I've never been asked to give a positive review or they won't send me stuff. They just send it to me without any specifications. They don't pay me though, so I'm not a, they're not sponsored. Uh, they're not sponsors of mine. I'm not sponsored by them. Uh, I get nothing out of it other than they send me this gear free of charge to review. So without any further ado, let's get into the different stuff. I'm going to go by company by company. The first company is a company called Light Take, which I'd never heard of before. Um, I guess they saw my reviews of stuff I've done for Freewell, and then they just contacted me and said they would like to send me some gear to review. Also in the Mavic and drone theme. So they sent me some stuff, and I didn't know Light Take at all, lighttake.com. So I went on their website, and they are actually more, they're not just a drone supplying company. They're actually pretty much like Amazon, but Chinese. So what ends up happening is you go on their website and they've got stuff to cover all sorts of electronic items and things. Since they knew I had a drone, uh, kind of a drone channel there for a while during the winter when I wasn't sailing, I was doing a lot of Mavic Pro stuff. They sent me drone stuff. So the most exciting thing I got, well, like one of the most exciting things I got was this. And so it looks like a quite the contraption, but it's called a five-in-one charger from my Mavic Pro. As you see, it's called five in one, but it has three cords to charge three separate batteries. Okay, so you have three batteries simultaneously charging with this one controller. Now, why is it called a five in one controller? It's because on top of the three cords for the uh, Mavic Pro battery, you also have two USB out cords, which means you can charge your controller with one cord and your phone with the other while simultaneously charging all three Mavic Pro batteries at once as opposed to when you get the DJI uh, hub for charging the batteries, they can charge multiple batteries, but they do one battery, and when that one's fully charged, they do a second battery, and when that one's fully charged, they do a third battery. I've, as you can see here, I have all three batteries charged. These lights will be red when the batteries are not fully charged, and then they turn green when they're fully charged. I'd already uh, tested this and, and plugged these in, and they were red, and now they're green, so I can't go back to red because I can't discharge these batteries, but nonetheless, take my word for it. The next thing, for any drone, doesn't have to be the Mavic Pro, but they sent me this. And this would work for my, D, uh, my Q500, which is a bigger drone as well. And I wanna warn you, when you get one of these things, stand back when you let it go, because that's what happens. <laughs> it's a landing gear. So you have a blue side, and you have an orange side, whichever side. It's good quality, it's like a drum. And then it also comes with four pegs, I guess, to hold it down so if it's windy, you don't have to worry about this thing blowing away. It's pretty substantial. There's a good size rib around the outside of this, a rim that's kind of would weight it down anyway, but I guess if it was really windy, you could peg it with these little loops at the end, you just peg it down to the ground. So this is perfect for the Mavic because the Mavic doesn't have much clearance over things like grass, or if you're landing on a beach, like I was in the BVI, I wish I'd gotten this before I went to the BVI. If you land on a beach and all the sand is getting thrown up, it's not good for the Mavic because the air intake's at the front, it'll suck all that sand right into the electronics. Something like this would be awesome. So I'll use this as well. So thank you, Light Take, for that. The next thing they sent me are these hard clamshell cases for the Mavic Pro. 
and this is perfect. I have a hard case that I did bring the BVI from Freewell, but it's pretty big when you start factoring in. It gives like foam in between each individual component. Like every battery has foam between it and every controller and everything else has foam. So it's pretty big when you start packing it all in there. This is for the run and gun Mavic person. It's a hard clamshell case. Your Mavic fits inside. Close it, zip it, throw it in your backpack. So you just throw it in your backpack and this protects your Mavic from getting banged by anything else in your backpack. You have a smaller one when they ship it to you, this controller case fits inside this case. Again, same idea. Your controller ends up being inside this. You zip it closed, throw it in your backpack and you're good to go. I think that's pretty awesome. Now it won't, because you have one battery in here and your controller, you don't have anywhere to put your spare batteries, but you can obviously just throw that in a pocket of your backpack. The batteries aren't nearly as uh, delicate. And the next thing they sent me was something kind of cool. You can't tell them apart other than the color difference, but this is the DJI um, prop, spare prop, made of plastic. And they sent me these exactly, can't tell them apart other than one's gold. The gold one is the, um, carbon fiber one. These are carbon fiber replacement blades. So they'll be more sturdy than plastic. As anybody knows, if you hit the ground a little too hard with these plastic ones, you will snap or crack these blades. Carbon fiber is the way to go. I have replaced my carbon fiber blades on my Q500 and they're much more sturdy. You can literally kind of, you know, hit a twig or hit a branch and the carbon fiber blade will just keep going. It won't crack or break. So that's definitely something pretty cool. Like I said, I can't tell them apart. They have the exact same workings you know the hinge hinges at the at the center the same obviously uh, base to connect it to your mavic and the only way i can tell them apart is the the uh, carbon fiber one's gold and the plastic one is white i plan to switch these over to on my mavic right away might as well fly always with carbon fiber um, but you don't probably want to mix and match so you don't want to have three carbon fiber blades and one plastic or vice versa so stick with all of one so i have four carbon fiber blades and that is pretty much it for light take so the next company that sent me stuff is the company that sent me stuff before. They're called Freewell, Freewell Gear. And they sent me a bunch of stuff too. So let me just pause, get rid of all this stuff from Light Take and move on to the Freewell Gear. Okay, so Freewell Gear. As you know from the past, Freewell sent me some ND filters for my Mavic Pro. And I love my ND filters. I pretty much don't fly without them now because I have various levels of uh, ND to take away the brightness. It's something I think you need to have on your Mavic Pro. They sent me this. The reason I mention it is they sent me stuff this time and it seemed to be all around Hero 5 Black. So they sent me, first of all, they sent me ND filters. I don't know if you can see that on the thing. They sent me a, a kit of ND filters that comes in their same Freewell kind of like pouch, padded pouch thing. And it's an ND4, an ND8, an ND16, and an ND32. So that covers the full gambit of any ND filter you would want. I appreciate they sent that to me. Uh, and I probably will use it, my uh, GoPro Hero 5 here on my motorcycle. I plan to take motorcycle trips from here in Ottawa to Kingston where my boat is this summer as many times as I can. And of course I'd like to take you along with me. It's some beautiful backcountry to motorcycle through. And I'll probably have this mounted on my chest. I have a chest mount for my GoPro. And you think, why do you need ND filters? Well, it's for sunny days. I would only thought about using my Hero 5 in water. And I used it in the uh, BBI series for underwater shots. I don't use it to vlog because to be quite honest, the Hero 5 Black has absolutely crappy audio, like the worst audio on the camera I've ever, ever had. So I don't use it to vlog. I know a lot of people try it and have used um, GoPros in the past to vlog. I just can't do it. The audio is just too crappy. I have a Canon G7X that I use for my uh, vlogging. Um, so anyways, I don't use it for that, but they sent it to me and I probably will use it on my motorcycle trip. I use these cameras for action cameras only when the audio is not that important. Like riding on a motorcycle down a highway, you want the visual. You don't really care if the motorcycle sound isn't perfect or if the wind noise isn't perfect. Um, you'll probably turn the volume down on that footage anyway. So along with the NT filters, they sent me this handle, which is actually a powered handle. P1 Power Grip from Freewell. They have Freewell written on everything. I think they must manufacture their own stuff. So they're not just a retailer, they're a manufacturer. But the P1 Power Grip, what it is, is it's a power pack that you can plug in your USB or micro SD card or uh, cord and then plug into your camera. So not only do you have your, your battery from your camera, you have this extra power pack so you can record for hours and hours and hours. This would be helpful if I was planning to use this 
as my vlogging camera because you could hold it and look at yourself and, and go for hours and hours, but I don't. So the ND filters I might use on my motorcycle trips, this handle, power grip handle, to be quite honest, I don't know how often I'll really use it because I don't use my GoPro as a vlogging camera. And when I do use my GoPro, it probably won't be for hours and hours, so I won't necessarily need a power thing. But if that's something you think you could use, Freewell Gear sells it, so check it out. The next thing they sent me is this much bigger, <laughs> not powered, but massively long, I think 40 inches long. It's their Pro M3 action camera monopod, they call it. And they call it a monopod because it stands about almost 40 inches tall, so a little less than four feet tall. It's huge. Um, here's what happened though. I was thinking, when am I gonna use this thing? Because I'm not planning to vlog with my, my Hero 5, as I mentioned. Um, and a, a selfie stick, it looked like a massive selfie stick, like a four foot long selfie stick. I thought, yeah, I don't know if I'd use that. But then I thought about it. If you ever watch any sailing videos where they're, they're dipping their GoPro into the water to watch the dolphins swim by or to see the fish under the boat, that's when I'll use it. So I unpacked this and took it out and thought, this is pretty cool for boating. And I last weekend, I went, motored up the St. Lawrence and I brought it with me and I forgot to bring it back. So just trust me, it's a big, long handled, 40 inch long selfie stick for your, for your GoPros. And also I noticed this though, you can actually use this thing for your smartphone as well, because with it comes this little attachment that goes onto the GoPro mount and then turns into this spring loaded uh, contraption that holds your, your phone. So if you wanted to use this big, long selfie stick with your, your uh, iPhone or your other smartphone, there you go, it comes with it as well. So it doesn't have to be a GoPro, but that's the way the mount on these things comes. It comes with the standard uh, spin mount uh, for the GoPro. The next thing they sent me is actually back to being a Mavic thing. They sent me this little sun shield and I've already put it on my, my uh, Mavic here. And what it is is to stop the flares when you're, you're filming into the sun and the sun's coming in well, if it comes in from straight in front of you, this isn't gonna protect it. But if the sun's coming in at like a 45 degree angle from the side, um, if you didn't have this on, if I take it off, you'll see. If you didn't have that on, the sun coming in from the side can cause some flaring. Uh, there you go, you can see I already have my ND filter on there. But by putting this on, you lessen that a bit. Uh, anything that comes in from a, an angle, this shield is gonna stop the light from getting in there. It stops a few of the flares. One other thing they sent me again is this metal case and I was thinking, what is this? And it is another Hero 5 ND filter, but this one's called the ND1000. So I don't know how, how dark an ND1000 is, but that's pretty damn dark. So that's again, another ND filter for my Hero 5. And I believe that's it from Freewell. So I'll move on to one more company and I'll just clear off this table and I'll show you the last two pieces of gear. So the next company that sent me stuff just reached out to me and said, can we send you some product? And you, if you want to put it on your channel and review it, great. I said, sure, why not, right? So I'm thinking I'm going to get some more Mavic Pro stuff or camera stuff since I'm always talking about my Panasonic GH4, GH5, or my GoPro. Um, so I guess I should have asked what they're sending me, but they sent me microphones, which I use my shotgun mic. And I mean, obviously a lavalier mic might sound a little better, but I've always used my shotgun mic as my talk to the camera mic. When they sent me stuff, they sent me two boxes. One, their company's name's Mayono. One's a lavalier mic, which I already owned a lavalier mic. I just never really use it. It's kind of a pain to put it on a separate audio recorder and then have to sync up your, your words to the, to the video later. And I could send a lavalier mic directly to my camera, but a lot of times lavalier mics aren't that long. Um, they're expecting you to record it on something in your pocket. So they're usually, you know, no more than four, three, four feet long. So the first box was cool, it was a lavalier mic, but it is by far, and this is it, the, just the box, but this is the actual lavalier mic. It is by far the longest cord of a lavalier mic I've ever seen in my entire life. The thing's gotta be like 11 feet long. And it's a powered mic. Inside here, there's a battery. So I guess some things like some smartphones and whatnot need their own, the mic needs its own power. I don't think my GH5, which is what I'm recording on now, needs a uh, ghost power, but I might be wrong. Nonetheless, if it does, this one comes with a battery built in. So what I'm gonna do now is you've been listening to me on my shotgun microphone. I'm gonna clip on this Mayono lavalier mic and plug it into my input jack of my camera and we'll see how it sounds. 
Okay, so this is the Meono lavalier mic, powered lavalier mic. So I'll listen to the sound now. I noticed that the recording volume seems to spike higher on this and it might be because it's powered that it's actually amplifying the sound. On this little controller is an on off switch, but I don't see a volume up or volume down switch um, to like turn up your mic volume. You have to do that on camera, which is fine. Once you've decided you're going with lavalier mic, you just you know set your camera to be a lower volume than I would with my shotgun mic. So let's see how this sounds and I'll get back to you on my thoughts. You put your thoughts in the comments below whether you like the sound of my shotgun mic better or this lavalier mic. I have a gut feeling the lavalier mic should sound better because it's so close to my mouth that the sound should seem richer and it's right on my chest so you get the, the deepness of my, my chest. But while I'm talking on this, I might as well go on to the second microphone. Now this is the second box they sent me. As you can see, absolutely no writing on it at all. So I didn't know what this was. I opened it up and it's another microphone. So that's when I quite clearly realized Mayono is a microphone company. And that's fine. I mean, we all need microphones in the vlogging and video industry. But I, this looks like a interview mic, like something you would go to a trade show and, you know, hey, how, you know, tell me about your product. Um, that's what I thought it was until we plugged it in and found out that whenever you're holding it with your hands and you rub your fingers, although the sound quality is fine as long as you're not moving your hand, the minute you start moving your hand at all to adjust it, you can hear that in the microphone. So I thought, that's kind of weird. There was no directions, there's no name on this to say what it was. So I went on the Mayona website just to see what this is. And they call this a podcasting or I guess voiceover microphone, which implies you need, and they show it on their, on their website, in a microphone mount, like a, supposed to have a, hand, you know, a thing that holds it. Um, so it's not supposed to be in your hand. It's not an interview mic. It's meant to be like this. This is what I use. I use a blue Yeti with a pop filter on it. It does me quite well, but needless to say, this is a lot bigger than this. Uh, probably costs a lot more than this too. But if you're starting out and you're a podcaster or a YouTuber and you have a microphone mount that you can just leave it so you don't have to hold it in your hand, the quality of this is pretty good, I gotta say. So it just doesn't seem like something I'm gonna be able to use because I already have a pretty good setup in my place with a surround uh, buffer for my microphone and this is mounted in the middle of it. So thank you for Mayona for letting me test it, but uh, I probably won't use it. Um, probably just give it to my stepson. He's getting into uh, YouTube and videoing too, so he can maybe get a microphone mount for it and use it. He said the quality is quite good. So that's that. So last thing I'll do is I'll pause the uh, video and I'll listen to the sound of this lavalier mic and see if I like it better than the shotgun mic. Back in a sec. Okay, I'm back. Full disclosure, I love the lavalier mic sound, but this little on off switch, you really have to watch it. I did a whole clip to say how I appreciated this lavalier mic sound more than the shotgun mic, only to find that halfway through the clip, I lost audio because this on off switch is just a little bit finicky. I'm pushing it in the fully on position right now to keep it running, but if I take my finger off the on switch, watch within a moment or two, it will lose, it'll in essence can th think I've turned it off, watch. And see, I talk there and I lost, I can see the mic, mic bars on my screen there. So this is the problem. I do like the lavalier, I love the long cord, but Mayono, I'm assuming you're gonna end up watching this. Um, this little on off switch, It's too temperamental. I know you didn't hear that. Every time I take my finger off the on switch, it shuts itself off. So that's a problem. So maybe I just got a defective one, but I do, I do think that this is what I'm gonna do with my talking head shots from now on. I'm gonna get a lavalier mic. Shotgun mic is fine, does the job, but it sounds a little uh, tinnier. It doesn't sound quite as good. And I have a really good shotgun mic. I got the uh, Asden SM30, uh, it's a stereo mono combo. You just switch whether you want stereo or mono. It's a pretty expensive shotgun mic. So it's not that I got a cheap shotgun mic. It's that a lavalier mic being close to your mouth and right on your chest so you get that deeper, richer voice is better. So there you go. I will change to a lavalier mic. Maybe I will have to glue this in the on position so it doesn't shut itself off halfway through my conversation. 
I was very annoying to put my, my little clip in to think I'm done my episode, only to find out that halfway through it stopped recording me. So, problem. Anyways, that's it. I'd like to thank the companies that sent me products, starting with Mayono. I appreciate the lavalier mic. It seems to work fine as long as I can keep the on button on. Uh, obviously, Freewell has been sending me gear before. They sent me more stuff for the, uh, the GoPro Hero 5 Black. And uh, if, if I used my Hero 5 Black as a vlogging camera, all that gear would have been excellent. But I tend to only use it as an action camera. So things like powered sticks to hold the, the, the GoPro, Probably not something I'm gonna use, but probably somebody out there does vlog with their GoPro and that would be helpful. And also to Light Take, which is a new company I've never dealt with before, but the stuff they sent me was outstanding. From the landing pads, to the multi-charger, to the clamshell cases. They're all things that I will use and they all seem to be very, very good quality. So check those three companies out. So where am I going on this channel from here on out? So now that I've done all these gear review in one episode, instead of breaking it into numerous episodes, I'm now gonna get right into my Sailing the Thousand Islands and Great Lakes series this summer. So subscribe so you don't miss any of those episodes. It's gonna be good, good stuff. There's gonna be lots of cinematic with my Panasonic GH5, my GH4, my vlogging camera. Also, I'm gonna get my Mavic involved to do aerial sh uh, shots. It should be an excellent uh, season of sailing. So until then, this is Craig signing off, wishing you safe cruising. Safe.